The history of Back to the Future in video games has not been a pretty one. And so my mandate to Telltale when they said we're going to do Back to the Future is this game cannot suck eggs. Uh, I was aware of his frustration at previous attempts at making a game. Definitely the, the first time we met, we talked about that. You know, with Telltale, our process starts with the story and the characters, and we apply the story mechanics later. And I think that people were really excited about the potential of where this could go because we really want to protect the license. And you know, also for us, like getting Bob Gale sign off was everything. There's never going to be a Back to the Future Part Four. We're not doing that. But right. Telltale's Back to the Future game is pretty close to what a Part Four could be. Making a Telltale game is sort of modeled after the TV episodic model, where um, we. Instead of telling one story at once, we tell a bunch of stories that are all connected over the course of a season. So in Back to the Future's case, it was five episodes. Uh, so first we figure out like the really rough story arc, um, and that's kind of where everything starts. We would have roundtable meetings with the Telltale guys who would come down to L.A. We got to talking about things. I proposed that we go back into Doc Brown's youth, because this was an idea that Bob Zemeckis and I had had way early on when we were trying to figure out what Back to the Future Part 2 was going to be about. And instantly, like, all of the fans in the room just went, yeah, that's why we should do this. That's the story we want to tell and explore. And then it was all just a matter of, okay, well, we have this basic idea. How do we get the player involved? What is, you know, obviously we want it to be a Doc and Marty story. That was kind of the core of what the films are. And so we started there, came up with the problem for the whole series um, of Doc getting stranded back in time. Then we go in and start actually kind of creating the concept art. I remember seeing that first Marty sketch was another key moment in the process where we're like, okay, that's the thing we were most worried about in this production. We've got that figured out, now we can move on. Well, the best part of the Telltale guys on the game were they were huge fans of the movie and they wanted to get it right. They, they wanted really to be true to the spirit of Back to the Future. Another like really important part of the process for us was getting the actual actors from the movie to be involved. From the very get-go, when the, the game was first pitched, we said we have to get Christopher Lloyd. If we're going to be doing Doc Brown in a huge speaking role, it's got to be right. Uh, I think it's great. I want a fa you know, fabulous idea. Uh, it's certainly timely. How many video games are hot? And uh, this is great material. I mean, it should be should be a lot of fun. Great Scott! Having Tom Wilson come back for some voiceover now is rad. Tom as Biff, episode 103, take one. You're lucky your old man's here, butthead! I feel like that guy is just one of the huge parts. Like, you can't have a Back to the Future game without Biff. He moves his neck more. He uh, uses his jaw more than I do. You know, th things like that. So with every character in the movie, I would think about those things. So it's, it's there, I don't have to watch everything. Because I remember those cues also, the, the physicality. Although in voiceover it doesn't matter so much, but as, as you see, maybe in the, in the B-roll, you see, you know, I'm being, trying to be physical to, to, uh, to get, you know, to get back into it, to, to, um, to be able to do it right. And then having Claudia Wells come in too, like she was, I think, right off the bat, you know, interested as well, and heard that kind of the band was getting back together. Jennifer? What the hell? The coup of all coups was getting Michael J. Fox to participate and be the voice of one of the McFly ancestors. Well, yeah, so when we were trying to get all the cast together, um, we spoke with Michael J. Fox, but due to time commitments, couldn't be you know, full time like we needed him. But we got him to do the cameo, which was awesome. And I almost feel like that was a really, almost a cooler use of him nowadays. But then the search turned to how do we find someone to do a Marty who can just come in and be our main character and it was a really big worry for a while. I voiced Marty McFly in Back to the Future the game. That is what I did. Jesus Christ, Doc, you disintegrated Einstein! Pressure, yeah. So to be like, oh, you know that amazing, iconic role that everyone loves and knows and can quote lines from and that incredibly famous, wonderful actor, Michael J. Fox, can you just replicate that? That's what I had going on in the back of my head. So yeah, it was a lot, a lot of pressure. Uh, at one point, we got an email from our accountant who said that she'd gotten emailed an MP3 from some kid who said he would like to be Marty in the Back to the Future game. I heard about this. I saw a news article, Telltale Games making Back to the Future and Jurassic Park into a game. And I was like, wow, that looks awesome. I would love to be, a, you know, the voice of Marty McFly, but there's that is no way in hell that's going to happen. And at the time, Telltale was a lot smaller, so you just have to Google Telltale to get like a list of phone numbers. 
And um, Rhoda was uh, the first name that popped up, so I called her and I left a message that was basically this nerdy, like, hey, my name is Adrian Locasio, I do a great, you know, I tried to sound as much like Marty as I could. I was like, it's my density to have this role. But I remember the, it going across someone's desk, them hearing this audition and just saying, man, this kid sounds exactly like Michael J. Fox when he was young. Doc, you gotta listen to me. The bruise, the bruise on your head, I know how that happened. You told me the whole story. It was almost no discussion, it was just kind of, yeah, we heard that MP3 that I think he recorded on like a rock band microphone was like, it was just insane, but it was that good. AJ's Marty McFly is damn near flawless. Uh, when I heard his voice, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I listened to it and if I didn't know that this was not Michael, I would, I would have assumed it was. He was such a crucial piece to have that energy throughout the entire series. Um, so it was, it was amazing working with him. I was obsessed with the movies growing up, like obsessed with Back to the Future. So it was like, it was something that was always in the back of my head. It was just a silly party trick at, you know, what went from a social thing to party trick to actually becoming very useful. <laughs> so, Jennifer. Uh-huh. What do you think of me? I don't. Working on this from a fan perspective was the most pressure I've ever felt on anything. Trying to invent a way where we can pull you along through the story and then use dialogue options where you get to choose what Marty's gonna say. And I think that's the kind of the hook for us is giving you a situation and then saying, well, here's three different ways or four different ways that Marty could possibly react. If you were playing Marty, what would you do? And I think that it allows people to really author their own story. Telltale's Back to the Future game is the only game that deserves to be called Back to the Future. It's very true to the spirit of the movies. The voice acting is terrific. The characterization is great. And with the new consoles, the game is just gonna sparkle and jump off the screen. Bringing this game to a new generation, even though it's not that old, is actually super exciting. Like getting to debut it again on all the new platforms. Um, Telltale's got a lot bigger of a fan base now, and there's a lot of people who probably didn't know that we made this game. Um, but it's still got a lot of the same core principles that are fun in a Telltale game. You know, we're taking this thing that's super familiar and we're putting our own story in it and allowing you to play it. So um, in time with the 30th anniversary of the films, now we're getting to kind of add to what's out there in the media and saying like, you know, you're rebuying the movie again and watching it. Here's a game you might enjoy as well. And it kind of, you know, watch the movies first, get back the nostalgia, and then right after the movie ends, you can pop in the game and continue the story from there.